In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created this white tiger while giving you some useful tips for drawing white and black fur. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. Before I get into the tutorial, I want to give a quick announcement that I am now on Patreon. So this means that for a very small amount every month, you can get longer real-time step-by-step tutorials showing you exactly what I'm doing along the way. And if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description. But this tiger is actually the first video on Patreon. So head on over there if you want to check it out. So today I'm using the Conte Pastel Sticks, Faber-Castell Pit Pastels, Stabilo Carbothello Pastel Pencils, and Pan Pastels. And I'm applying the Pan Pastels with these soft tools, and that's S-O-F-F-T, and I'm working on Claire Fontaine Pastel Mat. So I've transferred my outline onto my Claire Fontaine pastel mat paper and you can use whatever method you like. I've actually used a projector for this one, but you can transfer it with transfer paper or you can freehand it if you like. And I've started out by applying pan pastels in the base layer. When you're using pan pastels, make sure that you press lightly and add more pastel to your soft tool if you need to, rather than pressing really hard on your paper. So when the pastel stops coming off of your tool, instead of pressing hard to try and get more pastel to come off of your tool, apply more pastel to your tool and then go onto your paper because you can really damage your tools and they wear away quite quickly if you press really hard on your paper. Another tip is to use the larger soft sponges. And you can actually squeeze those into a smaller shape and these sponges actually wear away a lot less quickly than the little soft tool covers that I'm using here. But I like using these for the smaller detailed kind of areas because it has a nice tip to it. When creating the base layer, I always make it slightly darker than it needs to be because it gives you a base to put lighter colors or darker colors on top of. If you went straight in with the lightest color and then you wouldn't have much depth in your piece because it all looks like one value, you won't be able to add lighter colors on top if you've already gone in with a really light color. So start by adding a slightly darker color than you think you'll need and then you can add details on top. So I'm starting with the black straps. The left side of the face is in shadow and the right side is really sunlit and I chose this photo on purpose because I really liked the blues in the shadow and the warmer colors in the sunlit area, it makes white fur look a lot more interesting. So I'm using more blues and blacks on the shadow side and more reds and browns on the sunlit side. Moving on to the white part of the fur, I'm still sticking with the blues and the grays on the shadow side and the warmer yellows and creams on the lighter side, but they're obviously going to be a lot lighter than the black stripes will be. And the colors look really exaggerated in the first layer, but they'll get toned down with more layers and it will still show through a little bit at the end. So it won't look as vibrant and obvious as it does now, it will get toned down. And I like to get in the darker colors first. I don't always do it this way, but if I have a complicated subject like this, I like to get the darker parts in first so I don't lose my place or my outline. And when you start out with the darker colors, it makes it a lot easier for me to see my values a bit better. So I know how dark or how light to go in other areas because I have that darkest color to compare it to. And I lost the footage, but I actually blend out every layer of the pastel with my finger before I start on the next layer. You don't have to use your finger. You can use a cotton tip or a soft tool or a blending stump or whatever you like, or you can wrap a tissue around your finger if you did want to use your finger. The reason that I blend out the pastel in between each layer is because that it pushes the pastel into the tooth of the paper. So rather than continuing to build up layers and layers of pastel, which will fill up the tooth really quickly and create a smooth flat surface that will be harder for more pastel to go on top of, I'm actually trying to push that pastel into the tooth of the paper, which allows some of that tooth to show through, meaning that you can actually add more pastel on top a little bit easier. So I'm starting on the first layer of details and I'm using the Conte sticks because they are a hard pastel which doesn't fill up the tooth as quick as some of the softer pastels. And this allows me to add more layers on top a little bit easier because less pastel comes off of the stick and fills up the tooth than it does when you're using a softer one. 
When you blend out harder pastels, they don't blend out quite as smoothly or as easily as the pan pastels do or soft pastels. And I use them for that reason on purpose. For the fur, I want some of the texture to show through at every stage. So even after I blend this layer, some of that texture will still be there and that's the kind of look that I'm after. Because the strokes won't blend out completely, I make sure that my fur is going in the right direction and it's the right length. If you put long strokes on the nose where it's supposed to be really short fur, it will look like it has long fur on the nose there. So make sure that you're paying close attention to your reference and try and get your pastel strokes to go the same length as the length of fur in that area. You can see that my strokes aren't particularly neat right now and they really do look quite scribbly, but that's okay because it will blend out enough to make it so that it's not so obvious, but you still will see some of the strokes. The fur around the eye and the nose area also changes direction quite a lot and it also changes quite quickly so pay attention to that area really closely as well. I'm using some pastel pencils in some of the areas in this layer if there's a smaller section or if I don't have the right colour in the Conte sticks. You can do the entire layer with pastel pencils if you like if that's all you have but it's more cost effective to use the Conte sticks. When I create white or black animals, I personally always add a lot more subtle blues and purples and yellows and other colors into the fur than what you can see in the original photo, because I think it makes it look a lot more interesting and realistic. It gives it quite a lot more depth than if you just tried to use grays and blacks to create the shadows and the highlights in the fur. And if you try and use greys to make shadows in the white areas of the fur, it can actually make the animal look a little bit old because it looks like it has grey fur instead of giving the effect of shadows. So using those blues and purples as well as the greys and blacks in the shadow areas will really help stop that looking like it's just an old animal. Try not to add too much pastel on your first layer. Make it as light as you can so that you can add more layers on top. If you fill the tooth too quickly by adding lots of pastel, you won't be able to add those detail layers on top. If you don't know what tooth is when I'm talking about it, it's the little grooves in the paper like hills and valleys. So when you add pastel, the hills actually catch the pastel and slowly you'll add more layers and fill up the valleys. Once your valleys are full, the surface is now even and flat and there's nothing for the pastel to grab onto, so you'll struggle to add more layers. So I'm actually blending this layer out with a cotton tip and you can use a blending stump or anything else or your finger if you like. And there are heaps of ways to blend out the pastel but I do like using the cotton tips because they're small enough to keep the details there and get into those smaller areas but they're also quite cost effective and I always have them around. I've started on another layer using pastel pencils to start getting in some of the fur details. And I'm using more cooler blues and greys on the shadow side and warmer reds and yellows and creams on the sunlit side. And you can use whatever pastels you like for this. And I'm mixing it up between the Conte sticks and the pencils depending on what colour I need. The Conte sticks are a bit more vibrant than the pencils. So I like to use the blacks and the whites and the brighter colours of the Conte sticks for some areas instead of the pencils. And there's no rules to this, I'm basically just building up my layers and adding more detail as I go along. I'm also keeping in mind that after each layer, I will blend out the pastel. So until I get my final layer, I don't want to put too much detail in there because I'll have to redo it once it's blended out. When you're drawing white or black fur, the most important thing that will help you is a good reference photo. Try and pick one that has really high contrast. If you pick a photo that is evenly lit all over, in my opinion, it doesn't look as interesting and it's harder to create a piece that looks 3D or like it has depth if there isn't a big contrast between the highlights and the shadows. I try and choose one that has blues in the shadows and warmer colours in the sunlight or basically choose a photo that has more colour showing through when you look past the fact that it's a white animal. To make it easier for myself to see some of those blues or yellows in the fur, I actually import my photo into a photo editing app or a program. And I usually just use Microsoft PowerPoint because I don't really need anything fancy for this. I just hype up the saturation a lot so that the colours are very obvious. And I won't draw the piece exactly like this, but I'll definitely use some of those colours more subtly in those areas to make it look a bit more interesting. 
Looking at the reference photo like this shows that the white fur has so many different variations of colour in it and it's only pure white in the really highlighted areas. If you're taking on a white pet or animal as a commission, try to get a reference photo where they've taken the photo outside in natural light but in the shade so that the sunlight isn't directly shining onto the fur but it's lit by natural light. If the reference photo is taken inside, especially for white animals, it can make the fur look yellow or dirty and it's, it's not a very accurate representation of the colour of the fur. And it just doesn't look as good as if it was taken outside or by a window. And if you're doing it for a commission, it can be a lot harder because sometimes the pet has passed away and you don't have many photos to choose from. It's incredibly difficult to accurately make up details that aren't in your reference especially for pet portrait commissions because it has to be exactly like the individual pet down to every marking that the pet has. Not only is it difficult for an experienced artist to do that, but it's even more difficult for people who are just starting out. If the reference photo isn't ideal, I'd highly recommend politely turning down the commission. Explain that you don't believe you can create a high quality portrait from this photo because it's not worth accepting the commission only to have your client be let down because it's not the same quality as your previous work. It can also damage your reputation if you've got a lot of work that is really great and then you've got some random pieces of work that weren't so great and it's not even your fault. Your artwork might have been as good as it can possibly get but because you've used a poor reference photo that's going to show through in your own work but other people from the outside won't see it like that. They'll just see that it's not as good quality, so your work is not as consistent. And when you're working with your reference photo, I would import it into an editing program that has an eyedropper tool, and I just pick out some of the colors in different areas and create swatches of those colors, because your eyes can really play some tricks on you, especially with white fur, because you'll think it's a certain color, but in reality, it's usually not the colour you thought it was, so creating swatches really helps me out. And I'll leave a link in the description to a video where I've drawn a white dog on white paper. I explain exactly how to choose and edit a reference photo, and this tutorial also has more tips about drawing white fur. When it comes to sharpening pastel pencils, a lot of people seem to have issues with it, and I did as well when I first started out, but I've learned that pastel pencils are never going to be as sharp as a coloured pencil or as a graphite or any other sort of pencil like that because they're quite a lot softer and if you do get it to a really fine point like that it will most likely crumble and snap when it hits the paper. So I've learned that if you use a craft knife to peel away the wood casing of your pencil just to reveal the pastel that's underneath that's as sharp as you need it for most of your project. You don't really need those fine details right until the end. So when you do need those fine details, you can use a manual crank handle sharpener. And I find that these tend to not break the pastel pencils as much as other sharpeners do. Or you can also just use the craft knife and then use sandpaper to make the tip a little bit sharper. But if you try and sharpen your pencil throughout the entire process to get a really sharp point, you'll find that you'll sharpen away a lot of your pastel and you'll end up wasting a lot. But I have a link in the description to a video that I created about sharpening pastel pencils specifically, so if you want to check that out, that's down there for you. When you're working with fur, especially white or black fur, it actually reflects the colours in the surroundings. So most of the time, if the dog is outside, there will be blue in the fur because of the sky. And sometimes you'll see reflections of the grass or anything that's in the background. You'll be able to see hints of those colours in the subject itself. So when I choose a background for these kinds of subjects, I try to pick a colour that already exists in the reference photo. Because of the white fur where it reflects the colours around it, choosing a colour that already is part of the background means that it will probably blend in and look like the animal belongs in that scene rather than like it was cut and pasted there. And I always make sure to subtly include more of that background colour in the fur as well to make it look more cohesive. When adding whiskers or highlights, if you're struggling to get that extra layer on top, Try switching to a softer pastel like a Rembrandt soft pastel stick or another softer pastel. And if you need that really fine detail like for the whiskers, try using the Caran d'Ache pastel pencils because they're much softer than the Derwent, the Faber-Castell or the Carbothello. Soft pastels go on top of harder pastels quite a bit easier. 
the Karandash are quite expensive and they do break and crumble easily because of how soft they are. So I only have a few of them. Like I have a white, a dark brown, a black and a few other colors that I usually want to have a really bright, intense color of. But I use them sparingly at the end of my project when I need that extra boost. You can see now that there's more layers. All the blues and yellows and reds and greens that were in the first few layers now look really subtle and it helps to really make that area look like it's in shadow and the other side to look like it's in sunlight. I've got a playlist on the screen with some other pastel tutorials that I thought you might find useful and I've also got that tutorial of the white dog on the white background for you if you want some extra tips on choosing a reference photo and working with white fur. So click on those and I'll see you over there.